fake it till you make it. How many of you have heard of this sort of cliche statement before? Okay, a good amount of you, I'd say. We often tell ourselves these things in order to prepare ourselves for whatever life throws at us. Our challenges, our weaknesses, and sometimes even preparing ourselves to speak in front of everyone for the first time. When I think about this statement, I think about the brave and the selfless. The men and women in uniform, the protectors of our communities, those who cannot show certain emotions during certain times in order to protect our own life. You see, we live in a world where society places this image that we have to show our best selves and not our worst. That in order to succeed in life, you should show that you are stronger and never show your weaknesses. That those who show emotions are considered to be less desirable than those who do. I'm about to talk about something that might be a little bit sensitive. A topic that not too many people often want to hear. Some of the information that I'm going to share may be a little bit triggering, and so therefore, viewer discretion is advised. However, I do believe that this is an important topic because this is something that happens in our world and it happens around us all the time. Some of the images that I'm going to share are from the courtesy of a current firefighter and paramedic, um, the name of Daniel Sundhall, who has created these images from his own interpretation of the line of duty. I want you all to think about someone who you know who is a first responder. This person can be a friend, a family member, a friend of a friend, or it could just be a stranger that you've seen responding to an emergency. And I want you to think about that person throughout the entirety of the segment. Post-traumatic stress disorder. A condition where a person encounters difficulty, recovering after experiencing or witnessing a terrifying event. This formulates itself into certain symptoms, such as nightmares, anxiety, mistrust, and flashbacks. Although the adrenaline and the excitement of being a first responder is always something that catches the eye of many people, First responders are twice as likely to develop post-traumatic stress disorder, more than the average person. A cross-sectional study unveiled that one-fourth of firefighters worldwide will have PTSD and one-third of paramedics will have the same. That's pretty staggering. A single study of 250 firefighters and paramedics designed to assess the work trauma that these individuals were going through, and they did a before and after study. And before the exposure of, of the traumatic incidents that they were going through, only 1% of them stated that they have some sort of a mental health related stress um, due to on-site trauma. And then after the exposure has occurred, 8.4% of these individuals developed alcohol-related problems, 16.3% went on work leave, and 6.8% had to take psychiatric medication. That is something that not too many people know about, and that's something that a lot of people consider to be taboo. It's very interesting to see that there was an overall 30% change in a person's behavior based on those traumatic incidents. This also plays a part into a person's relationship and personal life. Divorce rates are also very high within first responders, as it is 10% higher than the national average of 50%. 72% of all first responders are sleep deprived, and you thought being a college student was, was bad. Suicide rates are also something that is a common factor within first responders. A recent report has shown 
that in 2008, over 141 law enforcement officials have lost their lives from suicide. And in 2016, it was reduced to only 108. Although there was a reduction, this still was and still is an issue that we are encountering. More and more first responders die from suicide than impacts of the incidents that they deal with in the line of duty. A young and passionate newly recruit police officer goes into work the first day and is really excited. He just turned 21 and this is his first day, you know, in his call. He wants to prove that he is different from all of the law enforcement officials that the society portrays in a negative way until he is faced with a chilling call of a murder scene in an impoverished area. How will he respond? I was really curious to know more about this, and I really wanted to see and feel what it might be like to be a law enforcement official and see the complexities and difficulties that they face, since many of them are shown in a negative way that the media represents. So I went and I spoke to a captain of a fire academy, I'm sorry, the police academy, and he told me to do this police simulation training. I thought to myself, like, how does this simulation training going to really help me understand what it's going to be like to be a law enforcement official on site because it's just a simulator? I was wrong. I went into this room, and it was a dark room, and there was this huge screen similar to how what you see right now. And I was put into a scenario of a school shooting. Upon my arrival of going into the hallways, the physical impact of the environment and the fear of losing my own life started to get the best of me as I kept seeing these realistic elements of people dying right in front of my face and seeing people getting shot. And all of a sudden, my hands start shaking, my heart starts being really fast, and everything starts getting into tunnel vision. And I just try to find the suspect, and I open fired. What would you have done? I guess probably the same thing. I was very nervous at that point, and that's the only thing that I thought about. And then I thought to myself, I said, I wonder how the situation would have played out if a law enforcement official who was dealing with symptoms of post-traumatic stress was also forced to make a split-second decision in a high-risk environment. It is reported that many first responders often don't like to talk about these things because they lose respect and it's just not something that they do. And it's not just law enforcement officials who have this macho protected role of you know, trying to save the communities and not let their reputation get the best of them. It's also all of us and the rest of the first responders. You see, there is a commonality between mental health of first responders and the impact the public safety in the communities that they serve. When certain feelings and emotions are being compartmentalized and pushed aside, when certain traumatic stressors are not being acknowledged, it shows itself in other ways in the long term. This then becomes a microcosm to a widespread issue from the stigma our public safety officials view on the concept of mental health. So how can we solve this ongoing issue? You see, we often think that regardless of one's profession, in the end, we're all human. Human beings have a basic need of being loved and supported by others. Here are some key components that I have come up with personally that I believe can bridge the gaps between public safety workers and the citizens of our communities. The first key element is acceptance. To be accepted in such a way that with or without having a personal defect 
will not only stabilize a person's self-esteem, but it will increase the likelihood for them to ask for help when needed and not feel as though it is a bad thing to do so without the negative criticism or judgment. The second thing is empathy. Having the ability to understand someone is one thing, but being able to put yourself in that person's shoes not only enables that person to know that there's someone that truly understands them, but also gives them a relief that, to know that there's someone who genuinely cares for them and is willing to see things in their way, which also increases the likelihood for asking for help. And last but not least, compassion. Compassion is one of those emotions that we all crave, and it's also an emotion that we take the most for granted. It's a powerful thing. You see, it's not the people that save lives, it's the act of kindness. Studies have shown that by practicing altruism and compassion, not only does it decrease the stigma of mental health, but it also increases a person's overall life expectancy. By implementing these three components of compassion, empathy, and acceptance, not only can we create a catalyst for social change, but we can alter the way we perceive others and the way others can perceive us. So I'm going to end with this quote. We cannot help everyone, but everyone can help someone. So let us all start with a simple act of kindness. Thank you.